Hi everybody, in this video I want to show you one of the ways that I like to book my Amazon sales in QuickBooks and particularly in QuickBooks Online. So there's a couple different ways and I've done another video where I actually book it based on the actual payment. So if you go into Seller Central and you get the payment summary and it says, you know, here's your sales, less Amazon fees, um, and some other miscellaneous adjustments and then the money that finally hits your bank account that's one way to do it and basically what you do is you'd replace the transaction of the money coming in and then do a journal entry to um, uh, like to mirror that payment now the other way to do it and I think this is a little bit better personally just because like particularly for a corporation um, you're always going to have you know timing differences when your Amazon payments like some people get payments you know daily weekly um, every two weeks and you know the the timing is always a little off you're not going to get it at you know exactly the first of the month and the last of the month so this way that I'm using is I'm going to use the one page summary the monthly summary that you get out of Seller Central and in the notes I'll put a, a link I'll put some instructions how to pull it but what I do is I just basically take the one month's sales report and I mirror that so I use my chart of accounts which I'll put a link below and you know you can buy it if you want if not I mean you can create your own accounts but you know these I've already set up all the accounts to mirror that one page summary and then what I do is I just basically mirror it so you know I've got FBA product sales I put in the amounts so, I mean here's your sales side and all the other miscellaneous credits then we go through the expense side and book all those um, I like doing it this way one of the benefits is you get a little bit more detail like if you just use the payment summary it's like here's all your sales and here's your fees whereas if you do it this way you can break some of the fees out so a lot of people that are doing you know heavy PPC uh, advertising you don't want to break that out so you know this allows you to kind of to do that now the weird balancing is uh, this other one here so I've got another account here called amazon.com transfers now I just created this account now what I did was I created this you know you can select and create a new account at any point um, so I, I did that and what it is it's a current asset account so I didn't want to mess around with accounts receivable and invoices and all that jazz it just you know sometimes QuickBooks is a little complicated that way so all I did was I made another current asset account and I call it an amazon.com transfer so I have one for .ca and one for .com so this one basically the first number that I put in here is on the one page summary that's the actual amount that got transferred so if you had two or three transfers if you had daily transfers whatever that's the amount of money that got transferred to your bank account I just put it to this miscellaneous account you know this amazon.com transfers that's on the balance sheet then I do another one that basically is the difference so that everything balances because you need to have your transactions balance you know all the debits and the credits so then this is basically like this one here is 3800 that's the amount of money that is still outstanding um, from Amazon because of cutoff issues right so sometimes you know your payment might be like the first and you know the 14th or you know so you've got some you know a days one way or another depending on the months and how they fall sometimes this amount could be an account receivable balance and sometimes it could be a payable so then when I go through the transactions that I import through um, say your bank statements and stuff like that I'll just put that amount to this dot com transfers and it'll be the other side so if so the 7300 would come in on the transfer side they would go on this side and it would just cancel each other out so that account is kinda like the accounts receivable from Amazon so this is a dot com one the QuickBooks is because I'm Canadian I'm running my books in Canada so it automatically converts it if you're Canadian and you got a different exchange rate you can actually punch in the exact exchange rate that you got um, but anyhow, so you see this is now a balance here. So if I look at another journal entry, for instance, recent journal entries, let's go to maybe number six. Maybe that's saving yes. So in this one, for instance, see all the same stuff, except this is the amount that was transferred to our bank account and the balancing is on the other side. So in this case, I got, you know, some of the transfers that came in actually related to the prior amount, you know, prior month, again, timing and cutoff. So these ones are all going to kind of weirdly balance out. But I set these up as another asset. It just makes life a little bit easier. Um, and then, you know, 
you can just kind of book it. So this is, you know, every month I go through and I just take that one page summary and I book these and, you know, the accounts receivable accounts will balance out here. You know, there's always going to be some money owing from Amazon at some point just because of the cutoff. But instead of doing, you know, if you're getting payments like every day, then you got to go through and do your payment summary. Like that's just a nightmare. So in this case, I just take the one pager and I do it. And all these different accounts mirror the settlement so some if you have more or less of these then the accounts are already set up because of my quickbooks uh, chart of accounts you can buy it mirrors the exact it mirrors all the different accounts so you can just upload it one time and then you've got it so i've got the canadian i've got us ones and then if i look at like for instance here journal entry number five you know here is all the .ca sales and except see they're all on .ca and there's no conversion because this is in canadian dollars and the other thing that I do is on the one page summary, it'll show, for instance, the GST and HST that's, that was collected and refunded. So I can also put those amounts in here. Now I have to use like a, a weird little uh, payable account to kind of balance it out because sometimes QuickBooks doesn't like when you book it to specific GST payable accounts. But if you need to open another one, just make a suspense account and just make sure you take it into account. And as you can see, I've got .ca transfers and balance these out. So. This is, again, using the one-page summary from Amazon. You know, here's the monthly totals. Uh, oh, and the other thing that if you're Canadian and you're booking your U.S. revenues, then it also will take, you know, the whole month and convert it nicely into Canadian dollars, which is what you're supposed to do. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. But again, this is a, a nice, neat way to book your Amazon sales without having to buy any expensive, fancy plugins and things like that because, you know, Nobody wants to spend more money than they have to. Hope that helped, and uh, subscribe to my channel, and check out my free group, and I got a bunch more links below.